I'm Allison with Flick Direct, and I'm speaking with Luis Iga. Did I say it right? Iga Garza, yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, Garza. Sorry. Right. Um, okay. <laughs> and we're talking about Murder in the Woods, a film that he has directed and is. Now, let me ask you first off, because this film has been out for a little while already, I understand, but now it's also coming into theaters and drive-ins. Is that correct? No. So we did oh. a festival circuit. Ah, and okay. So that's why. However, because um, prior to being a filmmaker, I was in marketing and advertising. Oh. You know, we did a big, I did a big uh, announcement and big things, uh, you know, because it was my, it's my first feature film. So yeah. I thought that's the way you do it. Like you do every other, you know, <laughs> you know, when I was in, in the pharmaceutical industry, when you were launching a product, you know, so I was not aware that you shouldn't make that much noise when it's just a festival circuit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Until you actually release it. So yeah, so that was a, that was a learning experience because then now IMDb won't change the, the, the won't change our year. Uh, but again, that okay. year is for wide releases or commercial releases and ours wasn't, it was just festivals. Tell me how one goes from marketing into directing the feature films. <laughs> well, I mean, that was my, <clears throat> since I was a little kid in Mexico, I grew up in Mexico, I've always wanted to to be a filmmaker. I loved mm. Uh, the, the, the the director that got me into this is, obviously, I mean, like a lot of filmmakers is George Lucas, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the whole make believe of, of creating these worlds that don't exist, uh, where the sky's the limit. That's what my inspiration. So I came to the States pursuing that, but I wanted to be more involved in, in visual effects <clears throat> and special effects, practical effects. And, but, you know, so, and I always wanted to go to USC because that's where George went. So, um, so I came to the States, I studied undergrad and I did fine arts. So I studied graphic design. And from that, I went, I went into marketing. So um, everything you see done in this movie, like the poster, <laughs> the graphics, it's all literally me. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you um, did a lot more than double duty here with oh, directing no, I'm doing and marketing. 20, and... <laughs> 20 duties. I'm also distributing the movie. So all the assets that you see on the marketing side, uh, are also being done by me. Wow. Um, I have a great uh, social media manager that is also helping me putting together, reassembling the artwork. I, you know, I give him layer files and he reassembles them. So it's just been, you know, we, we decided to do it ourselves just because when we were pitching the movie, a lot of the distributors didn't understand what this was about because mm. they've never seen something like this. Right. So I would tell them, hey, we have a movie that is Latino and they would see it. And then there's like, this is not a Latino movie because he didn't have any stereotypes for a lot of the executives <laughs> for it to be a Latino movie it needs to have stereotypes. Right. It needs to have the, mm. you know, the cholos or about crossing the border or about cartels, gang members. So that's the that's the 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 reality. So, you know, so we got offers and things. But again, as a marketer talking to. I've never uh, saw a, a you know distributor that that saw our vision and also understood the the product they had they would have in their hands. So that's when I decided to learn the the distribution business. So I learned the theatrical distribution business and the digital distribution business in the past couple of years and put it out. <laughs> and here you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean a lot of well, I'm very thankful to, for the investors that trusted in me uh, because they also. Uh, they're also uh, giving us financing for the for the distribution. So mm, that's great. It's it's nice to have a little bit of, of backing there. Yeah. Um, so let's get into this film. Speaking of, it's got a Latino cast mostly or a minority cast, yeah. but not in stereotypical ways. Was it always meant to be that way? Was it written that way? Or was that something that working with um, Yelena, you decided that that was the direction you wanted to go in? So I wanted, so we, when we met at USC, we were one of the only two Latino, one of the only few Latinos <clears throat> at USC at the time. So, um, so we, we always uh, wanted to do something. We always wanted to support uh, our, you know, minorities and, and, and our people to, to be able to, tell stories and represent them. I mean, Yelena, is also, she's also, um, she's also a, an actress. So she, she, mm. she went through a lot where she would get scripts and, and it was like one line here, one line there, 
uh, not real arcs, not real leading roles. Um, so we wanted to give opportunities to Latinos and people of color to play main roles. So that was mm. our goal from the get go. So when we, when we, when I brought the, the, the idea to her about this movie, and then we started collaborating and, um, and developing it, and then she wrote it, uh, we ended up uh, seeing everybody, right? But we wrote it for, um, we wrote it for people of, we wanted to be a diverse cast that, because that's our goal is to give opportunities to, to, yeah. to, to minorities. So, so if you look at the, at the, at the script, it can be, it could be played by almost anybody, right? So that mm -hmm. was the goal. So it's just general right. characters. That was the goal. However, the casting was, was, was different. In terms of your audience, because it is a Latino, a minority cast, do you feel it may alienate some of individuals who are not of that background? No, is that a concern? no, on the contrary, because of the lack of stereotypes, mm. um, when people see this movie, they don't even, I mean, that was the issue, with, not the issue, but that was the thing with the executives. It would be like, right. oh, this is just a movie. <laughs> Right. So we accomplished our goal. Right. We accomplished our goal. But we did a movie that is just like a general market movie. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, you know, it's for any any fan that likes this genre. If you like thrillers, if you like suspense, you know, if you like funny slasher movies, this is your this is your type of movie. So um, so that was exciting was that we accomplished it. Right. When people, um, you know, when we were in, in, general, in markets where there were not a lot of like we're in Portland and we have mm -hmm. a lot of more general general market. Uh, yeah. People enjoyed it and never would think about anything to do with Latinos or anything. So mm -hmm. we accomplished our goal and we're Good. super excited and happy about it. However, for some reason that ended up not helping us in the distribution side. Oh, <laughs> unfortunately. Well, hopefully word of mouth and everything will, will exactly. get it moving a little bit more. Uh, in terms of putting in those cultural references, um, I'm going to butcher this, Dia de los Muertos, um, the altar in the home. Was that a part of the original script to get that cultural background into it? Yeah. Or was that something you thought, oh, we'll add that in because it, it no, makes sense. No, it was sense. part of the whole development because, um, so, um, because there happened, I mean, we wanted to base it in reality, right? So if you live in New York, or if you live in LA in more metropolitan areas and you go mm -hmm. to any university, or any high school, you'll see that it's a mishmash of all types of color shapes and forms, right? And which right. is amazing because the younger, the younger, um, you know, the young adults and the and the young, and the kids are not they're 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 becoming colorblind, which is great, mm. right? So because they're growing up with 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 diversity, so it's something that is changing slowly, but it but it's but it's changing. So so we wanted to give it that reality. So if you go to an East LA, like for example, if you're in LA and you go to East LA and you go to a home. You know, because their their background is probably Mexican or Salvadorian, they're gonna have you know this type of references where you know they still do the altar de, de muertos and, and all that. So so that's why we wanted to base it in you know make it as real as possible, but not hit people in the head with the stereotypes. We wanted to make it organic, mm -hmm. as this is what you know is part of their culture. And I think you did a really good job of that blending all of that together because um, it wasn't so much in your face it was just part of their reality in exactly. a sense yeah that, which that, was nice. i'm so happy that you you uh you know you caught up on that and and every time people <laughs> like that you know audience and, and critics and people that watch the movie and they catch those little nuances and and they don't get hit in the head you know uh it's a, it, it, it's 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 very satisfying as a filmmaker to you know that people are 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 actually seeing what you intended to do Good, I'm glad. Yeah, I definitely did. Uh, talk a little bit about working with Danny Trejo. How did you get him involved in this uh, script? So <clears throat> since we literally, it's gonna sound cliche, but literally I was going out to investors with a different project that needed a lot more money. And they were like, well, we like you, we like your drive, your pain in the butt, you don't give up. <laughs> <laughs> so why, what can you do with this money? Do you have any other scripts? I'm like, oh, I have a great horror script, Slasher, which I didn't. So I called <laughs> Yelena, who actually was a writer on the other project too. Uh, and I'm like, hey, we need to write a horror script. <laughs> and we both love slashers growing up because they're not 
all, all the time scary and tense. It's like you're fun, the characters mm -hmm. are relatable, you're having a good time, it's full of tropes. Um, so we literally went to a coffee shop and started developing the, literally in a napkin, developing the, the story. And when we, you know, came out with Sheriff Lorenzo, we were like, it has to be Danny Trejo. There's no option. It has to be Danny Trejo. Mm -hmm. So when we went to the casting process and everything, we didn't cast that role. We went to Danny Trejo directly. Really? Um, I met uh, Danny's assistant, Michael, who ended up helping us on set. He was very helpful. He ended up uh, in the art department. So he, I met him at an event and then through him, I built a relationship and then he introduced me to Gloria, um, Danny's manager, I mean, agent, and she's been very, very helpful. So we sent her the offer and, you know, Danny's a very, very busy man. If he's not making a movie, he is giving talks yeah. and he's doing charity work. He's an amazing human being. So, um, so, you know, we weren't able, it, it was, we weren't getting a yes yet. And we're like three days away of shooting, oh. you know, like, so, but again, we didn't have, <laughs> to so uh, luckily by a miracle of God, uh, Yelena ran into him at a restaurant. Wow. That's a great story. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's crazy. Um, but then, and she, she approached him and was like, Hey Danny, did you get, Oh yeah. When do you guys need me? Um, oh, we need you this Friday. And he was okay. I'll, I'll get back to you. And then three hours later, Gloria, email me saying, you know, yeah, you know, he's in. I love yeah. that story. That's a good one to tell all the no, time. It's amazing. It's, it's, I mean, this, this movie is full of miracles. I'm telling you, like <laughs> with the budget that we made it and you know, the, it, it's been, it, it's a miracle that we have a movie and even a bigger miracle that people are, are, are loving it. Working on an independent film with such a small budget for young filmmakers out there, what are the challenges that you faced even um, at the level you're at and what, you know, you can offer them in, in terms of in advice? Uh, I mean, I mean, this could be a, a 12 episode show. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I mean, because everything that could, ro go, go, could go wrong, go wrong. Went wrong right? <laughs> um, you know, from, it was, it was also my first feature film. I mean, at USC, I did short, short films, but this was my first long feature film. It was the first time working with, you know, A-list actor like Danny Trejo and other mm. veteran actors like Soledad and Kurt. And, and, and so it, for me, it's just tenacity, right? Like know, n you know, know that you can deliver what you promise, mm. you know, and learn, learn all, all aspects of filmmaking. Because a lot of times, you know, I say yes to things I don't know, but I know I have the capabilities of doing it, right? And I'm going to deliver. And because I'm a man of my word, I don't, I don't sleep until I deliver on that promise. Oh. So, because we shot this movie in 2015 and we, you know, haven't given up. <laughs> five years later, there's, there's the lesson to everybody. Be tenacious. Five years later, <laughs> you'll get some success from it. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, 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 it's just a way, you know, in the independent world, that's what it is. You don't have the money. You don't have the the the, the, the attention. The, the the cast. Even though we have Danny Trejo, you know, you know, they people want even bigger cast. A lot of yeah. the distributors. So now this film is going into theaters where able to do um, or drive-ins, correct? So yeah. So we open in um, uh, August fourteenth in drive-ins and theaters nationwide, and now we're ending our run. Uh, okay. We're still in a few theaters. Uh, in okay. certain cities and this weekend we're still be in some theaters uh okay. however on this on friday the 18th we come out on vod in, ah, in, okay yeah, in all digital platforms okay i really actually like the idea of watching this movie in a drive-in even though i didn't get to because for some reason i think it's the perfect atmosphere for this film uh, was there a different experience for you did you get to see it both in the theater and in the drive-in and was it a different experience each time yeah i mean for me i mean i've seen this movie three million times because <laughs> i also edited the movie uh, so i had an editor ryan jump on board and he assemble it and edit it and then I and then again we're low budget so when we run out of funds I had to take it and then finish it up um fine cut it and, and you know try different things so but yeah I mean it, it's funny because these movies like it's 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 a throwback 
you know, mm -hmm. to those lashes from the 80s and 90s. So to watch it in a drive-in is such a throwback way that the experience is actually great. I went to a couple of drive-ins uh, to see it when we were playing in Southern California. So mm -hmm. I wanted to see, you know, people, the audience. Um, I also brought up a good friend of mine who helped us. Uh, he's older, so he cannot be, you know, have a lot of exposure. So it was great also for to people to get out that mm -hmm. that cannot, you know, they're more sensitive to to the virus. Uh, to be in a secluded place where, you know, they're safe because you're, you go in your car and you leave and that's it. Uh, and it's a 90, it's a 90 minute film too. So it's not that you have to stay a long time and you have to go to the bathroom and everything. So it's a pretty safe, um, it's a pretty safe way to, to enjoy a movie. But yeah, it was, it was amazing because I, I mean, I haven't gone to drive-ins in years yes. since I was a kid, right? And Me now too. it's a full experience. <laughs> it's, uh, it's amazing. It's, um, it was really really cool to see it that yeah. way yeah yeah i honestly do think because again i went to drive-ins as a kid aging myself now but um i think that it would have been a great way to see this film is in, as a drive-in just because of the nature of the film you know a horror film in the woods so I, i'm glad that audiences were able to see it um in yeah and context. i'm still pushing i'm still pushing yeah. for some southern california drive-ins to hopefully take mm -hmm. us back uh, just for like a weekend or something. I mean, it's, it's Hispanic Heritage Month, so maybe oh. you know, do an event around that. You know, starts right. literally starts today. Uh, it's from uh, tomorrow is Mexican Independence Day, so pretty right. pretty exciting. So yeah, so I'm still pushing because I I believe that people really enjoyed it in that way, and I you know I I think a lot of people because they didn't have we didn't have a lot of time and budget to market it. A little people, a lot of people didn't know that it was out there. Hmm. So, and everybody's asking me now that, like, oh, it's still at the drive-in, still at the drive-in. I'm like, no, sorry. So I'm still, you know, <laughs> so I'm pushing to hopefully we can get back in there. I'm in the South Florida market. So is Miami somewhere you've been where you want to be going to or Fort Lauderdale, sure. that kind of area? We're, we're talking to some drive-ins there. Uh, okay. Hopefully they'll take us in uh, because I used, I lived in Miami for six years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Before I was in LA, I... I, uh, I, I lived in Brickell and Coral Gables, yeah. so I'm very familiar with that area. And a lot of my friends are there. And actually, I passed. I spent half of the quarantine in Miami. So I, I, got, I was in a in a business trip, and I got stuck there. Oh no! <laughs> but it's, it's huh. a perfect place to get stuck in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Lots of culture, lots of good food yeah. if they're open. That kind of thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I want to talk about the ending of this movie because I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I didn't see that coming. I'm not going to spoil it, but I loved it. Will we be getting a sequel? Well, I really hope that <laughs> the executives from Universal, Lionsgate, Blumhouse, you know, Sony have that question once they mm. watch this movie because we we would love to to do a sequel. You know, however, mm. again, it's, it's, the, it's a challenge, you no? Know? For us to be able to do a sequel, you know, the movie needs to be successful. Right. You know, we need everybody's support, everybody to go on Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb, <laughs> give us a, give us a, a, a review, because that's very important. That's what studios look at. Studio looks, obviously, it's show business, right? So they look at the bottom line. <laughs> yeah. So we need to make a lot of sales from VOD, a lot of downloads. Mm. That would give us, um, you know, that would give us placement on the on the VOD platforms, and if you are like the number one, you know, or top ten in iTunes and all those things, that obviously brings attention and helps. So that's why, you know, that's you know, the only we don't have a lot of money. We're competing with budgets of a minimum of ten million dollars just for marketing, right? right? Mm -hmm. So, so we the only the only power we have is the people to help us spread the word and you know like the movie buy it and share it with their friends and give us reviews well we will make sure that at least down in this market that people get to see you know this is coming and what it's about you should definitely get it so uh, yeah that i and, and you know what here's the thing if you don't get a sequel i'm gonna come and find you and find out what the sequel would have been because i really <laughs> want to know what happened <laughs> yeah no, yeah i mean it's 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 uh we I just we really enjoyed the the world that we built, uh, so we really want to continue, right? I mean yeah. that that would be you know if all of a sudden you're like you know murder in Chicago, 
<laughs> right? Murder <laughs> the woods were in Chicago, you know, the murder franchise and we're in number 15. That would be a great place to be. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. We'll see how all that goes. Um, yeah, we'll change the murder in yeah. murder in the hood, murder in somewhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, rural Kentucky. There you go. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to speaking with me today. And uh, the film was a lot of fun. It was great to see the cultural references, and it was great to see such a, a diverse cast not shown in such a stereotypical way. So I wish you much success in, with it in the future and your other endeavors. And yeah, it, if there's going to be a sequel, you need to let me know. Absolutely. I'll definitely will. I definitely will. <laughs> and just so for your audience to know, if they go to our website, uh, murinthewoodsmovie.com, that's where all the platforms are going to be listed on Friday. They can just click on the one they want to purchase or rent from. And also all, all the links to our social media pages are there so they can follow us uh, to stay tuned for the sequel. <laughs> yes. Now I have people intrigued because they're going to want to watch the movie to get to the end just to see what happens. Because I honestly wasn't expecting that. And I was like, what? What? And let, yeah, I need to know. <laughs> Inquiring minds need to know. <laughs> it was a great Great plot twist at the very end. Yeah, absolutely. You. You're welcome. You have a great afternoon. You too. Bye. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.